Earlier in the war, the M4 Sherman was a promise of strength, speed, and reliability. But promises don't survive first contact with the enemy. Each shell that struck it forced a redesign. Each burned out hull gave a lesson in survival. By the war's end, the Sherman had evolved significantly, not by choice, but by necessity. The M4 Sherman was built to improve on the M3 Lee, adding a central 75mm gun and a 50.8mm glacis plate sloped at 56 degrees. In North Africa campaign, early Shermans outclassed the Panzer III and short-barreled Panzer IV. But as German 50mm, 75mm, and 88mm guns appeared, Sherman's armor proved too thin. The slope glacis lost much of its protection because of the small hatches and vision ports that created weak spots. Fires after penetration were usually caused by dry-stowed ammunition in the sponsons, not by the gasoline engine. To cover these weak points, 25mm steel applique plates were welded on the turret cheeks, driver hoods, and hole sides over ammo bins. This helped against smaller rounds but did little against high-velocity 75mm or 88mm hits. Later Shermans adopted a 47-degree glacis with larger flush hatches, removing the earlier structural weak spots and improving frontal protection. The M4A1 used a single-piece cast hull instead of welded plates to simplify production and remove joint weaknesses. Casting required strict quality control to avoid flaws, but it was mainly a production alternative rather than a major armor upgrade. Crews added spare tracks, welded plates, or scrap armor for extra protection. Sandbags were banned by patent after tests showed they strained the suspension and gave minimal defense against heat rounds. The M4A2, powered by a General Motors twin diesel engine and built with a welded hole, shared the main weaknesses of early Shermans, including weak hatches in the glacis, dry ammunition stored in the sponsons that caused fires, and a fragile three-piece bolted transmission cover. The fixes developed for these issues were standardized across all Sherman variants, not unique to the M4A2. Early Shermans often bogged down in soft ground, becoming easy targets. To reduce ground pressure, engineers fitted extended end connectors, known as duckbill grousers, to the tracks. These widened the footprint, improving traction and mobility, which was key to survival by preventing immobilization under fire. The exposed, dry ammo racks were reinforced using prefabricated steel applique plates welded over the sponson storage areas. These localized upgrades improved resistance against side hits and reduced the chance of fires when penetrated. The older three-piece bolted transmission cover was replaced with a stronger one-piece cast cover. This eliminated weak seams, improved the bow's curved shape, and prevented the lower hull from acting as a shot trap. Crews commonly attach spare road wheels or bogey parts to the front and sides. Though unofficial, this created makeshift space armor that offered extra protection from light anti-tank weapons and shrapnel. Early Sherman turrets made for the 75mm gun had a curved mantlet that could deflect incoming rounds downward into the thin hull roof and was a potentially dangerous shot trap. As higher velocity German guns were more common, this flaw became critical. The small driver vision slots and cramped turret also limited visibility and crew efficiency. Late M4A1, M4A2, and M4A3 models received major turret and hull redesigns to solve these issues. The older curved mantlet was replaced by the new T23 turret with its thick, flat M62 gun mantlet. This larger turret provided space for the 76mm gun and removed the curved lower edge that caused ricochets. The M62's heavy casting at about 89mm thick gave much better frontal protection and became the signature look of the 76mm Shermans. The old direct vision slots were replaced by large hinged armored hatches, restoring a smooth glacis slope and removing a major weak point. Combined with the T23 turret, these upgrades greatly improved crew safety and frontal strength. The T23 turret used heavier cast armor, up to 63 millimeters on the sides and thicker on the front, offering better protection against enemy fire. A new vision block cupola replaced the old periscope, giving the commander full 360-degree vision through armored glass blocks and safer battlefield awareness. Even after the improved M4A3, Sherman still had a reputation for catching fire when hit, often called Ronson's, though the nickname was likely post-war. Tests showed that up to 80% of early Shermans burned after penetration, mainly because of exposed ammunition stored dry in the whole sponsons and not by the gasoline engine. 
The fix led to the W designation, standing for wet stowage, first used on the M4A176W in early 1944. This system moved all main gun rounds from the vulnerable side racks to sealed bins under the whole floor, surrounded by about 13 liters of a water glycol coolant mix. This drastically reduced post-hit fires by around 80%, protecting crews and improving the tank's balance. The liquid absorbed heat and fragments, preventing propellant ignition, effectively ending the Ronson problem. The tall split-ring commander hatch was replaced by a flatter armored cupola with five vision blocks for full 360-degree protected visibility. This reduced the tank's silhouette and let commanders stay buttoned up safely, cutting exposure and fatigue. Steel hoops were added around periscopes to protect them from bullets and shrapnel, keeping optics functional in combat. All ammunition was moved to the whole floor, sacrificing loading speed for crew safety. This innovation became the standard layout for subsequent late war American tanks. The nickname Easy 8 came from the E8 experimental suffix used for Shermans with horizontal volleyed spring suspension. While the earlier M476W was far less prone to fire, it still used the old vertical volley spring suspension, which limited how much armor and weight the tank could handle. VVSS also made the ride rough and unstable when firing on the move. The HVSS upgrade solved these issues, turning the EZ-8 into a stronger, smoother, and better protected Sherman. The HVSS's stronger design allowed the tank to carry extra armor without stressing the suspension. This made it possible to fit heavier applique armor, the 76mm gun, and wet stowage systems while maintaining balance and mobility. The new 23-inch T80 tracks replaced the narrow 16-inch type, spreading weight over a larger area. This reduced ground pressure, improved traction, and acted as extra protection for the lower hull by shielding it from small arms and shrapnel. The HVSS bogies were stronger, simpler, and easier to replace than the VVSS type. They resisted shrapnel damage better and included shock absorbers, giving the tank a smoother, more stable ride and improving accuracy while firing on the move. The Easy 8s 47-degree large hatch glacis removed weak vision ports and protruding hoods using a single sloped armor plate with hatch-top periscopes. The streamlined design increased effective armor and crew safety. While the M4A3 E8 combined mobility and firepower well, its 63.5mm glacis still couldn't withstand German high-velocity guns. To lead assaults on fortified positions, the U.S. Army developed the M4A3 E2 Jumbo, a heavily armored version of the Sherman built by Fisherbody between May and July 1944. Only 254 units were produced, designed as a temporary but highly survivable breakthrough tank until heavier designs became available. The Jumbo's front hull received a factory welded applique plate that increased total thickness to about 101 millimeters. Sloped at 47 degrees, this gave even greater effective protection. The rolled steel plate was welded directly to the hull for superior strength, allowing the Jumbo to resist most German medium anti-tank guns. The new cast turret featured a 178mm thick mantlet, the thickest of any World War II U.S. medium tank. It mounted the 75mm M3 gun, which was ideal for infantry support. Side armor was increased to 76mm and rear armor to 51mm, doubling protection against flanking fire. The differential housing was also replaced with a thicker, one-piece casting up to 140mm in critical areas. The Jumbo retained VVSS, but with reinforced components to handle its 42-ton weight. The added mass required revised gearing, lowering top speed from 26 to about 22 miles per hour, which traded mobility for exceptional durability in direct assaults. Thank you for watching, and see you in our next videos.